Welcome to Reading the Bible with Pastor. Today we're on Esther chapter 3, starting at verse 12. Last time we read about how Mordecai had angered Haman, and their ancestral lines had made it so that they were angry at each other at a, at a bigger level. They were angry at each other's people. Haman is now going to try to annihilate the Jews, and we're going to read how that happens. Remember that the time of the year also plays a role in this, in the fact that it revolves around some of the celebrations that God has already instituted for the, the Jews, the Israelites, and we'll see how God's providence plays a role throughout the book. Then the king's scribes were summoned on the 13th day of the first month, the first month being Nisan, also the same month as the Passover. In fact, Passover takes place on the 14th day, so this is right before Passover, would have began if they were in Jerusalem. And an edict, according to all that Haman commanded, was written to the king's satraps and to the governors over all the provinces and to the officials of all the peoples, to every province in its own script and every people in its own language. It was written in the name of King Ahasuerus and sealed with a king's signet ring. Letters were sent by couriers to all king, the king's provinces and instruction to kill, to destroy, to kill, and to annihilate all Jews, young and old, women and children, in one day, the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is the month of Adar, and to plunder their goods. So remember, they had rolled dice, basically, to see which month they were supposed to have this uh, annihilation. And they found it to be the twelfth month. Almost an entire year later, this is to happen. Verse 14. A copy of the document was to be issued as a decree in every province by proclamation to all people to be ready for that day. The couriers went out hurriedly by order of the king, and the decree was issued in Susa the citadel. And the king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city of Susa was thrown into confusion. Basically, what does this all mean? We are, we're waiting and, and we're supposed to kill my friends, all those sorts of things. And if they're able to kill and annihilate an entire group of people, why not me as well? So that, the whole city is being thrown into confusion while King Ahasuerus and Haman are just enjoying life. Also to note here is that God had intended this decree to take place almost a year later, giving time for things to happen. And again, we'll see how the Lord works so that his will happens and not Haman's or King Ahasuerus's. So we'll continue here with chapter 4. When Mordecai learned all that had been done, Mordecai tore his clothes, that's a, a sign of mourning and grief, and put on sackcloth and ashes, and went out in the midst of the city, and he cried out with a loud and bitter cry. He went up to the entrance of the gate, king's gate, for no one was allowed to enter the king's gate clothed in sackcloth. And in every province, wherever the king's command and his de decree reached, there was a great mourning among the Jews, with fasting, weeping, and lamenting. And many of them lay in sackcloth and ashes. A sign of mourning, a sign of grief, a sign of, Lord, help us. We don't know what to do anymore. When Esther's young women and her eunuchs came and told her, the queen was deeply distressed. She sent garments to clothe Mordecai so that he might take off his sackcloth, but he would not accept them. Then Esther called for Hathak, one of the king's eunuchs, who had been appointed to a tender, and ordered him to go to Mordecai to learn what this was and why it was. Hathak went out to Mordecai in the open square of the city in front of the king's gate, and Mordecai told him all that had happened to him and the exact sum of money that Haman had promised to pay into the king's treasuries for the destruction of the Jews. He probably was trying to find a way to bribe the king to take away this decree, but you can't bribe away 10,000 talents. It's an extreme amount of money, probably in a hyperbole of money. Verse 8. Mordecai also gave him a copy of the written decree issued in Susa for their destruction, that he might show it to Esther and explain it to her, and command her to go to the king to beg his favor and plead with him on behalf of her people. And Hathak went and told Esther what Mordecai had said. Then Esther spoke to Hathak and commanded him to go to Mordecai and say, All the king's servants and the people of the king's provinces know that if any man or woman 
goes to the king inside the inner court without being called. There is but one law, to be put to death, except the one to whom the king holds out the golden scepter, so that he may live. But as for me, I have not been called to come in to the king these thirty days. Even though she is queen, she is not privileged any more than anybody else, any man or woman in the entire kingdom. And she hasn't even seen the king for a month. It shows that they don't have a strong relationship um, and that the king is not necessarily using her as guidance or a helpmate, but just as a queen. And so she's saying, basically, if I go in to see him, I probably will die and never tell him what's going on. Verse 12. And they told Mordecai what Esther had said. Then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther. Do not think to yourself that, the, that in the king's palace you will es escape any more than all the other Jews. For you, if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place but you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Mordecai basically tells her, what do you think, you're, you're not going to die because you're in the king's palace? You're part of the Jews, they're annihilating all Jews. So whether you die before the king in the inner court or die because uh, in, in the twelfth month, death is at your door, you must act. And so he also says that maybe this is what God has intended, is that you were put in this place to prevent this from happening, to save your people. Really looking to say, God has hit this in hand. Verse 15, then Esther told him them to reply to Mordecai, go gather all the Jews to be found in Susa and hold a fast on my behalf and do not eat or drink for three days, night or day, I and my young women will also fast as you do. Then I will go to the king, though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Mordecai then went away and did everything as Esther had ordered him. They're going to fast. Um, probably here also pray to the Lord to, to make sure that what they want, that is to have life and not be destroyed, would happen. And Esther and Mordecai will also do this to fast. We'll see how everything transpires here in chapter 5, and we'll pick up there.